Welcome to the IBD School 500 series, a series of videos about how to interpret the results of your tests. More patients are now using patient portals to see their results, but may not know what they mean. In this video, IBD School 502, I will explain the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR. The ESR is a measurement of how fast your red blood cells, or erythrocytes, sink in a test tube filled with water. The red blood cells are normally negatively charged and sink slowly to the bottom of a test tube. However, if you have active inflammation, proteins in the blood called globulins and fibrinogen make the red blood cells stick together in clumps or stacks and sink, or sediment, much more quickly. This rate of sedimentation is measured in millimeters per hour. For patients with IBD, the ESR, also called the sedimentation rate or sed rate, is a bit like a thermometer for inflammation. When the sed rate is high, inflammation is active. And when the sed rate is low, inflammation is well controlled. How is the ESR helpful? The ESR can tell you if you have active inflammation without using a scope or a CT or MRI scan. It's a lot cheaper, about $30, and faster, usually returning results in about six hours, than most of our other tests for inflammation. It generally goes up slowly during the flare over about a week and goes down slowly within one week when a new therapy starts to help. It can measure the severity of a flare, measure the success of therapy, and measure whether inflammation is returning after a therapy is tapered or stopped. So what levels of sed rate are you looking for in your results? The sedimentation rate is measured in millimeters per hour and usually done with the Westergren method. It's important to look at your report and make sure which method is used. A good ESR is between 0 and 20. This is generally considered no inflammation or remission. A sed rate above 20 is considered smoldering inflammation. This often occurs in patients about to have a flare or recovering from a flare. A sed rate over 40 is active inflammation. Higher levels suggest more inflammatory activity, sometimes outside the intestine. Patients with abscesses or perforation can often have a sedimentation rate greater than 80. We can see levels over 100 in patients with severe inflammation. Note that males tend to have sed rates about 5 millimeters less than females, and people over 50 have sed rates about 10 higher than younger people. When is the sed rate less helpful? There are three particular times when the sed rate can be less helpful. The sed rate detects inflammation anywhere in the body, so inflammation somewhere else from an infection or inflammation in the joints or blood vessels can give you a high sed rate when your intestines are still in remission. The sed rate's not specific to inflammation in the intestine. Second, the sed rate tends to be artificially high during pregnancy, usually in the range of 30 to 50. And third, the sed rate is less sensitive to mild inflammation on the surface of the intestine. People with mild ulcerative colitis can have many shallow ulcers and still have a normal sedimentation rate. To summarize, the sed rate can be thought of as a slow-moving inflammation thermometer. It's important to know your highest sed rate during a flare and your lowest sed rate during remission to calibrate your personal inflammation thermometer. If you are looking for early signs of response to a new therapy, a faster responding biomarker of inflammation, like the CRP or a fecal marker, may be more helpful. But for many IBD patients, sed rate, CRP, or a stool marker, like calprotectin or lactoferrin, can be a helpful way to inexpensively follow your disease activity without invasive and expensive tests.